I've been really fascinated by all of this unreal game making shenanigans. So I'm gonna do a full breakdown of how I coded this game. But until then, I gotta get to work. Hey, Peter, buddy. Hey. Um, were you, were you here all night? Hmm? Were you sleeping here all night? What time is it? It's, I mean, 10.30, we gotta oh start our God. day. Yeah, you gotta, you gotta do a tutorial, man. You can okay. do that, right? You gotta, uh -huh. got like, three hours, right, at least? Yeah. Yeah, okay, all right. All right. I believe in you, man. Thanks, buddy. Oh, jeez. Yeah. Okay. All right, so... Hey Peter, uh, you still have to. I mean, are you gonna? Is he? Did he die? Is he dead? Are you dead? Like a weekend at Peter's. Weekend at Peter's. Weekend at Peter's. So this is how you do Unreal. This is Unreal. You hit these buttons, and then this makes a video game. That's how it works. Here in Peterland. Nah, he's, he's done. He's done. Good night. Good night forever. Let's make a video game. So the first thing I started with on this project is Unreal comes with like 10 different templates for games. It has a side scroller template. And so the first thing we need to do is to figure out how to get all of our friends in this game because currently this is a single player game. So in the Smash Brothers game, you don't start out with a character assigned. You need an intermediary between when you pick your character and when you start the game. We need an input receiver pawn. So in Smash Brothers, this would be the little hand that you move around. It takes the controls from your controller and it uses that information to let you cycle between characters and names, etc., so that you can then select your character, and the character variable is represented by a number 1 through 15, which actually corresponds to a spreadsheet which is called a data table. Row 1, Chase. And it has the so when you load up the actual map that you're going to be fighting in, the game looks at this data table, says, oh, this player chose character number one. What is the name of that chase? Give it the name chase. What is the mesh of that? It's chase body raw underscore zero one. And it finds the corresponding model to put onto the player's character. Now that we have all of our players joined in and our characters selected, we can move on to the actual playing of the game. And the way we transfer the player data from the character selection screen to the actual game is through a game instance. This is an object within Unreal that can hold data one level to the other. So you can see here we've got some sweet ass level design, which was designed by my very good friend Clint. This is actually called a player start, and we have four of these throughout the level specifying where the players will spawn. Let's move on to attacks. Who doesn't like punching people? So here you can see we have our <laughs> generic character, look, which looks really janky. This is a Nat model, but it has the Dean texture on it. Kill me! <laughs> <laughs> did I delete shit? Oh, I did. Okay. Oh, it was when I was banging on my keyboard. So this is how you do Unreal. I'm going to take you guys through a bit of the nitty gritty of the code of what happens when a player tries to attack. Let's start at the beginning. The player presses the button. The first thing that the code does is it checks, can the player actually attack? If the player is in the middle of turning left to right, it's not gonna let the player attack because then they would be attacking outward and we want them to attack either this direction or this direction. So that is the first check it does. Say the player was already just attacked and they're in the middle of recoiling from an attack. They shouldn't be able to attack while that's happening. So you set the can attack variable to no. And so it goes through those two checks before it actually lets the player attack. If the player can attack, it then has to decide whether or not it's going to be a neutral attack where you're just standing in one place or a side attack where you kind of move forward. So to do that, I've created a little function called trying to move left or right. So inside that function, we get the value of this joystick right here. And if it is either above 0.2 or below negative 0.2, it returns true, as in the character is trying to move. So if that is true and the character is trying to move, we need to execute a side attack. Otherwise, if it's false, we execute a neutral attack. For the neutral attack, the first thing we're going to do is prevent the player from doing another attack while they're already attacking or moving while they're attacking, because that just creates bug city and it's not worth it. We then play the attack animation. Then at the apex of their animation, which is 0.07 seconds, 
seconds after it starts, we start a line trace. What is that arrow for? When your leg swings out, it does what's called a line trace, which is it takes the direction of this arrow. If I hit anything in this area, I'm going to apply damage to it. When I do a little punch, you can see it creates this little sphere. Dean right here is captured in the sphere and damage is applied to him. And you can see that represented on his player HUD. Then once that's all done, we restore the player's ability to attack and move. And that finishes the attack. Matthew. Hey, man. Whoa, whoa. I'll be all right. But for a side attack, it's a bit more complicated because you have the ability to charge it. So we need a bit more specific code just for that. We first set the variable forward smashing to true. Three different things happen while the attack is being charged. First, we increase the damage of the attack as it charges. It starts at five and over a few seconds, it increases to around 20. Then we set the can move to zero because you don't want your player to be able to move around while they're charging an attack. It has to be something that leaves them a bit bit vulnerable since it's a powerful attack. At the same time you're preventing them from moving, you turn on the light, which is how I'm showing visually that the character is charging their attack. Then the third thing that's being done is playing sound effects. And I just stole some of the smash sound effects and threw them in here at specific times. So that's only happening when the player presses or holds the button. The attack actually fires once the player releases the button. So on release, we start the side attack follow through code. So the first check we go through is, was the attack attempt successful? Now, if the player tried to execute an attack and they were currently being attacked or there was some other reason why they couldn't, this wouldn't go any further, the attack wouldn't follow through. But if they are able to attack and they tried to attack, it keeps going into the momentarily slow down player code, which takes the velocity of the player and multiplies it times 0.2. It slows you down a bit, so you can't just <laughs> bolt through the level, beating everybody up. After that, we tell the player's leg to damage the opponent. And then there's a random timeline in here. I don't know why it's there, but when I removed it, it broke something. So we're keeping it there. None of us know what it does, but don't, let's not remove it. Anyways, after that, we restore the default attack damage. And then after that, we restore their ability to move and attack, returning everything back to normal. The, the hero's journey is complete. They have returned back to their land with the ultimate boon and the, the town rejoices and their character arc is complete. And that's attacking in Smush Brethren. Pretty straightforward. Once you actually know what to look for in Unreal, things become much more approachable. <laughs> oh my God. This was super fun. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Let's, uh, let's wrap it up with a little game. Hey, Dean. Let's play Super Smush Brethren. Yeah, I'm in the game? Great. Oh, bonks. Ooh, hell yeah. <laughs> we were like playing Fortnite for Node a long time ago, and it's like, oh, we need an Epic Games account. I'm like, I'm never gonna use this again. And they're like, poop bong 69. Turns out that's my main account, which all like the Unreal Engine stuff works through now. We have with us today virtual production expert poop bong 69. <laughs> Honestly, killing somebody in this game is so much more satisfying than Smash. <laughs> no, I'm still working right now. <laughs> Dude, this is so fucking good. <laughs> What's nice, too, is that the punches stop you from charging your kick. No, I'm the 69, we really appreciate it. This is great, Peter. This is nuts. Great work. Hey, want to hear the most annoying sound in the world? <laughs>